Or is Brian even on here anymore? It says shelter in place. Yeah. Let's just go with this. We'll do our Pledge of Allegiance and we can all just say it however it mumbles together as we do it. You don't want to try it anymore? Okay. Right, so Chris, start us with the flag slip. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, I don't know, is Bill on? I didn't check. I haven't seen him. So, no, Jerry, you can do the prayer. You can do the prayer, Jerry, and you get to do the thought of the day. That's how important you are to us. Is that right? I don't have the prayer. I've got the thought of the, the day. The prayer should be, you should be able to see the prayer now. Okay. Prayer for the day. Please join me in a moment of reflection and thanks for these words. With our friends beside us and no person beneath us, with the bonds of rotary between us and our worries behind us, with our goals before us and no task beyond us, with a thirst for knowledge and a dream of a polio free world, we are thankful for our rotary friends and the meal we are about to share. Amen. 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 Now this goes the other way. Oh, this is not this. I, I'm going to read the, the, the thought of the day that he gave me. Oh, perfect. Because I, I just opened the first slide that was here. So, says, uh, or Teddy Roosevelt, listen to Jerry. Uh, okay. Well, this won't be, this will be George Burns. The secret of a good sermon is to have a good beginning and a good ending and to have the two as close together as possible. <laughs> That's true. That's fine. And I could see him playing Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> All righty. Well, well I get rid of him now because he, uh, I just, Brian just sent me the whole package of slides. So, um, they're last week. So, like I said, we've got right now, we have Myron who is visiting today. But she's not really here, she said. And Chris is here. Rebecca, did you have any announcements or anything that you wanted to make? Yeah, just the upcoming dates. Please read the um, the grapevine. So, uh, Ryla's in two weeks. I'll be out of town, so I'll probably have to choose Joan. I'll probably oh, that's who we lost, Joan. I'll probably put Joan in charge um, as the point person, just in case they need anything. And then following that is the end of the year party. We have the Area 6 project, if people have signed up for it. Unfortunately, I can't do that either. Um, and then the, the, and the end of the year party um, is at Joan's house. The menu is the menu and um, uh, invite was sent out via whatever, evite.com. And then the Rotary District event, you need to register for it. All events, families are welcome, but um, they all need to be registered for. So hopefully we get a good attendance for the Rotary Conference and we all wear our shirts and travel as a pack and have some fun together with some family and friends. And then that'll be a good event, right? That's the one that's at the Glory Gardens, right? It's at you know, correct. And we have like three people volunteering in the morning, which is great. I don't have that list in front of me. I know it's Chris, Jesse, and I wanna say Joan, but don't quote me. I only signed us up for two volunteers. So it should be a fun day. So we'll and then July first, new cowboy, new sheriff in town. So <laughs> end of the year, twenty eighth. I'm done. Yeah, Dave Olson. Where is he? He's not even in the meeting right now. He usually is. I don't know. He's stalking everybody on the phone. Hmm. Neither is Jen. Um, all right, anything else? Wait, what? I missed it. I said, was there anything else? 
No, I never. I missed the joke. Yeah. Oh, the joke. I said, well, we said he's not here and neither is Joan. That's all. Oh, got it. That was okay. the joke. Yeah, um, those are my updates. Perfect, if you want perfect, to go perfect. into the bio and introduce David, that'd be great. Yep, absolutely. And uh, despite all of our technical difficulties, we do have a really good speaker today. Uh, David George Brook is our speaker, that gratitude guy. Um, he's a speaker, yeah. teacher, author, storyteller. Uh, David George Brook, that gratitude guy, has been a speaker coach and best selling author for over 25 years. He is a former Nordstrom store manager and has managed in the corporate world for over 30 years. His published, wor published works include The Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, Six Word Lessons to Embrace Gratitude, and a number of other books on gratitude. And so with that, um, we will hand it over to David, and uh, hopefully we'll go a little bit smoother technically than we have so far. Sounds good. No worries. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, and I'll say right before I get started, I'll take about 20, 25, uh, maybe minute, 25 minutes total. But you do need a couple of things. This is a very interactive talk. I talk extremely fast. And there's things that you need to have for this talk. You need to have a piece of paper, maybe a pad of paper, a pen, and possibly your cell phone. Keep it handy because we may do a text thing as well. So at least a piece of paper and a pen and maybe a pad and then get your cell phone handy. So I call this navigating the new normal through gratitude. And we've all been through a lot in the last year and a half. And I think that gratitude and the gratitude mindset is what's really saved me. I had a lot of loss in my life. My parents died when I was relatively young. My mom of cancer, my father of suicide. I got married and had a couple of kids and my wife passed away when my sons were four and 14. So I had a lot of traumas and things along the way. And I had to figure out something that was going to really help me. And gratitude turned out to be what I really needed. And I use a gratitude journal, which I highly recommend as well. But the main thing I want to start with is first and foremost, this is why you're going to need a piece of paper in about 30 seconds, is that a lot of it depends on your attitude and how you see yourself. You control your attitude every single day. When you get out of bed, you can get out of bed on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, up, down, negative, positive, grateful, ungrateful. You make that decision and nobody else controls it for you. And you can be positive and you can be negative, whatever it might be. It's a choice that you get to make. And it always depends on how you look at something. I was in a foot race. I live in Seattle and where Bellevue, where Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates live about six houses apart across to Seattle is a floating bridge. And I was doing a foot race there, a 10 K race once. And I was halfway across the race or halfway across the bridge. And I'm like really struggling. I see a lot of people in front of me and I look behind me and I see thousands of people going all the way up the other end of the floating bridge towards Bellevue where those guys live. And I turned back around and I thought, you know, here's what's interesting. All these people in front of me, if they weren't here today, I would be in first place. What if none of them have showed up? What if they said their knee hurt or something and none of those people made it? Yes, guess who'd be out front? So it depends on how you look at something. Even this silver linings of coronavirus or COVID-19, yes, it's been a challenging 18 months, give or take a few months, but look at this technology. I do a Zoom talk like this usually two to three times a week. That was never possible with the bandwidth just a few short years ago. The community has rallied together. There's never been anything that brought the entire world together for a common cause this extra time that was created the kids didn't get to go to school i know that but they spent a lot of time with the family that they're never going to forget which they had at certain times for this last year the science we've already had a vaccine i've gotten both my vaccines most people have at least the majority i think have now that was created in five to six months it was usually three to five years so that's incredible the efficiencies i we starbucks started in seattle so i go to starbucks a lot and i would drive an hour to see a friend of mine spend an hour with him and then an hour back now we do a zoom call we have our coffee here and I save two hours of coming and going. So it's very efficiency. All these conveniences, knock, knock, knock. There's Amazon fresh. I don't have to leave the house. There's my groceries. It's the coolest thing and so forth. But I think with gratitude in mind, maybe one of the most important things is, is it helps you to realign your priorities. We get our priorities messed up all the time. We take something small that really shouldn't be that big a deal. And we make it a big deal. But when you're grateful and you focus on what you have, one of my favorite terms is gratitude turns what you have into enough you don't start thinking about the neighbors that have the bigger house better boat better house better what better spouse better wife better car better mountain cabin better airplane whatever it is and you get grateful for what you have so let's take a minute and think about how you see yourself so here's the first exercise on your piece of paper i want you to write these two words you are y-o-u-a-r-e 
write those down there somewhere near the top of your paper. You are Y O U A R E. And I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. And here's what I want you to do for the next 30 seconds. I want you to imagine you are your biggest cheerleader, your husband, your wife, your parents, if you still have them, your best friend, whoever thinks you are the it person in this world. I want you to be that person for 30 seconds. And here's what I want you to write. You are how they would describe you. You are talented. You are creative. You are attractive. You are the best person, best personality. However, they would describe you 30 seconds, write as many things as you can in 30 seconds, how they describe you go. Okay, there's 30 seconds, and I'm sure you could write many more, but I got to jam a lot into a short period of time. So as you took the 30 seconds to write those things down, it's going to take you about three or four seconds to reread them. I want you to silently reread those characteristics, those qualities that they describe you. And if you give me a signal of a high five to the screen, how many people feel better after reading those six to eight qualities about you? High five to the screen if you do. Joan, I can see you. Yep. What about you, Jerry? Oh, and there's look at the whole deal, the Greg Constantino group. It's like <laughs> every single person. Good job. So why do we do that? So why do some people see us in such a better light than we don't we see ourselves? I'm not really sure, but I will tell you, I do a lot of Rotarian uh, talks. I'm a member of Seattle Four, which is a very large rotary in Seattle. And every time I do that exercise, about 80 to 90 percent of the people raise their hands. So the question is, how do we feel better about ourselves from our perspective and not from the best friend or the biggest cheerleader or whatever? I don't understand why we say things to ourselves we would never say to a friend. I used to call myself a word for a big chunk of my life. I don't do it anymore. I don't even say the word. I will just expel it for you. L-O-S-E-R. And one day I stopped. I thought, why are you doing that, David? If you don't advocate for yourself, who's going to advocate for you? So it's the look at that person to have a great relationship, getting gratitude in your life, having a gratitude journal, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, is a great way to cement that relationship. And I contend there's maybe no more important relationship, maybe besides your creator, that has to do with how you navigate life. And that's the relationship you have with the person in the mirror. So, so very important. Gratitude tip. I have a little three by five card here. It says that gratitude guy. That's my website, thatgratitudeguy.com. Put those words on a little card, on a card like this, on a thank you card, something you have that's relatively a little thicker than a piece of paper and put it on your mirror, on your computer, on your bulletin board, on your refrigerator somewhere. Yeah. You're having a rough day. You go look at that. You'll feel better about yourself. It makes such a big difference. So number one, that's how you see yourself. Number two, harnessing gratitude's power. How do we put gratitude to work? Well, one of the things is, is that I said gratitude turns what you have into enough. It's all about a mindset that makes such a big difference. Everybody knows two people enter a hospital with the same disease. The positive attitude lives. The negative attitude dies. I will give you an example where it definitely saved my life. When I was in my late 20s, early 30s, I learned how to fly. When I was going through the training, Jay Diddy was his name. And he says, now today's lesson, David, this is back in the early 80s. He says, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be grateful you listen to me today. And that's the word he used years ago. And he says, always believe your instruments. We're going to do work in the clouds and you're going to get disoriented and your instruments are going to seem like they're wrong. And he said, you're going to be grateful if you listen to me. Make, repeat that, David. It'll save your life. And I said, yes, Jay, I will be grateful that I listen to my instruments. Six months later, I'm flying along on my airplane. I get in the clouds with three friends of mine. I all not paying attention because I'm so scared because I can't see where I'm going. All of a sudden, I'm in a 60 degree bank turn to the right. I think I'm straight and level. And I went, oh, my God, remember the words of Jay. He said, always believe your instruments. My head, my stomach, my brain, everything said I was straight and level. The plane said I was turning to the right. I hit the heading bug. The plane went back to straight and level. And I thought I was upside down. And I stayed with it. And remember what he said, you're going to be grateful. And I kept pulling up through the clouds, pulling up. I was so disoriented, broke out of the clouds, saw Seattle in the district, in the distance, went back to Seattle, said, we're not going to the ocean for lunch. And I'm saved. It saved my life. That's how powerful when you have something that can change your life with a mindset like that. Gratitude tip, do a gratitude walk every single day. I do 15,000 to 18,000 steps every single day. I always have a gratitude theme. 
think about that. Get out, get your exercise. The average Rotarian, I'm 71. The average Rotarian is probably 60s or 70s. It's a little older group, maybe 50s. Well, you know what? Exercise is one of the keys to the best last third of your life. And so go out there, get those steps in, and then focus on something you're grateful for. The science of gratitude. Next subject. This is not woo-woo stuff. This is not something I learned in some commune in the 70s or whatever. I have a number of things I'm going to read here. So I'm going to read this pretty fast, but this is some of the science and the research behind what I'm talking about. Appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains, lower blood pressure, and less depression. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, I just talked about, and schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, and anger and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. Boy, is that true. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities to appreciate what we currently have. I mentioned that earlier. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for when the circumstances of life become unpleasant. Think about the last 18 months. Science has shown that gratitude is a natural antidepressant. The effects of gratitude when practiced daily can be almost the same as medications. It produces a feeling of long lasting happiness and contentment. When we express gratitude and receive the same, our brain releases dopamine and serotonin, the two critical neurotransmitters responsible for our emotions. They enhance our mood immediately making us feel happy from the inside. We are our own worst critics, why I wanted to do that, ex or that exercise earlier. And we hold ourselves to impossible standards and we continually compare ourselves to other people. What a joke. It's like a cat chasing its tail. Don't do it. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, the less anxiety you will experience. And finally, by consciously practicing gratitude every day, we can help these neural pathways to strengthen themselves and ultimately create a permanent, grateful, and positive nature within ourselves. So that's how powerful it is. So another exercise. Here's what I want you to do. Back to your piece of paper. I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this one. And you're gonna, this could be a bit of a big exercise. So before I even start it, I want to high five. This has homework involved. So I want a high five that everybody tells me they will finish their homework and they don't even know what it is. So I want to see a high five from everybody. Greg, what about your group? Are they still on the camera there? I got to make sure I get high fives from everybody. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. How many are there? Four or five of you? Look at every one of you guys is participating. Great job. All right. That's just your promise me you're going to do the homework. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds again. Here's what I want you to do on that piece of paper. It's going to seem like a big one, but that's why there's some homework involved. 30 seconds, I want you to write down as fast as you can the most memorable events of your life. Try to prioritize them. Could be personal, professional, trips, kids, grandkids, whatever it is. Write down as fast as you can in 30 seconds the most memorable events of your life. Go. Okay, and there's 30 seconds. And obviously, that's a big assignment. So what you promised me you'll do with the homework today is Thursday, May 27th. So a week from today must be like May 3rd or June 3rd or something like that, whatever next Thursday is, I want you to promise me that you will expand that list out of one of three things, top 25, top 50 or top 100. You choose whatever it is and expand it out to 25. And the gratitude tip is put it on an Excel spreadsheet or a Word doc or something so you can easily jockey it around because you want the most important things at the top, the most memorable at the top, all the way down. I was feeling really bad about six months ago. I get to, I'm starting to travel the country again as COVID's lightening up and I get, uh, and it got all over the place here and I've got a bunch of talks in Vegas and stuff. So it's really neat that for a year and a half, I didn't do much. And I was feeling sorry for myself. I started writing down some of the places I'd never been. And I caught myself, what is wrong with you? Why are you writing down the places you haven't been? How about all the things that you did? 
So I did a list over the course of a week, like I'm asking you to do. I came up with a hundred things and I've spoken to 10,000 soldiers. Like this is a smaller rotary group, a dozen or so people. I've spoken to one person once at a nursing home where they didn't advertise it. And I've spoken to 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord down south here between Seattle and Tacoma. So it doesn't matter. It's just like how this figures into where it is important to you. These are memorable events and you write that down and you print that up and you keep it handy. You're having a rough day and things aren't feeling right. You look at all the things you've done. You'll be shocked. That's why I want you to do it over the course of a, of a week because you'll be thinking about things. So that's the gratitude tip with that. Gratitude journal, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. I'm a high, high believer in having a gratitude journal. I just put the links in the chat where you can get my journal on Amazon. It's got my email if you need to email me for anything. But if you even get a spiral notebook, I'm fine with that. This is a journal. It costs $15. You write in every day, takes five minutes. There's a little saying up in the left-hand corner of the journal. And it says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. If you write about it, it empowers you. There is something to be said about writing down, I am so grateful to Brian O'Neill for inviting me to the Almaden Valley Rotary, even though he had a bad internet connection and is apparently in Rhode Island, from what I understand. Right. And to be able to speak to you folks today, it plants it in the brain. It just has a better impact on you. So, so, so very important. The format is, it's very simple. It says gratitude today. There's a day and the date. Today is Thursday, May 27th. The daily number we'll come to in a second. There's two lines for current events, special occasions. That's so you don't have to have a diary also. You can write something else. There's five or six lines, which you're grateful for. Two lines for the highlight of your day, which was the best thing that happened to you yesterday. There's a little quote. And on the right-hand side are your gratitude intentions, which is what you're going to be grateful for. And I can't cover that in 30 minutes, but that's what you can program your brain to be grateful for something that hasn't even happened. So gratitude exercise. Back to your pad of paper again. Here's what I want you to do. This is a very personal exercise. You're not sharing this with anybody. This is between you and the person in the mirror. I want you to start by writing down your daily number. What is your daily number? It's 102 on Thursday, May 22nd, 27th. How do you feel right now? 10 is the best day of your life. One is one of the worst days of your life. Write down whatever that number is to kind of gauge your temperature, if you will. You can do halves. Maybe you're a seven and a half, an eight and a half. Maybe you're having a tough day or a four. Whatever it might be, gauge that number. Write that number down in your piece of paper and circle it. Oh, I did it too. All right. And as soon as you're done with that, write down numbers one, two, three, four. You're going to write four things. So write one, two, three, four. And for numbers one to three, I'll give you about 20, 30 seconds for this. I want you to write down the number one thing you're grateful for. If you can only pick one, the number two, if you can only pick two, and the number three, if you can only pick three, that you are most grateful for in your life. If you can only pick one at one, two, and three. All right. And then at number four, again, it's one o'clock on Thursday, May 27th. I want you to think about this one for about 15, 20 seconds. What was the highlight of your day yesterday? What was the best thing that happened to you yesterday? Write that down at number four. All right. So now again, it takes a little longer to write these things than it does to reread them. So I want you, and this is, again, you don't share this. I do this in a lot of big groups and I tell people you're not sharing this with you're the person sitting next to you. It's just you and the person in the mirror. I want you to reread the three biggest things you're grateful for and the highlight of your day. And after you read those four things, I want you to write another daily number below that. It could be the same number or it could have changed. Whatever that is, write that number below number four and put a circle around it. All right, and then back to the high fives of the screen with an indication of a high five to the screen from the top number to the bottom number, 
signify with a high five, and then we'll see if Greg's group can come back online again. If your number went up from the top number to the bottom number, give me a high five if your number went up. Look at Greg's group coming through again. Oh, almost, almost every single person. Hold on. How about you, Joan? Did the number go up? <laughs> that was easy. That's correct. That was easy. That's about how long it takes to impact your attitude. So think about that. That was 30 to 45 seconds. This gratitude journal takes five minutes. I've timed it a million times, five minutes every day. I don't miss a day without writing in this. In fact, I was doing a big convention and in the back, I always sell my books. I got a book table with the different books I've done and everything. And this guy comes up and he says, is this your personal journal? This is the one you write in. Can I look at it? I said, sure. And he starts thumbing through it. And I said, well, don't look at it too, pers too closely. I mean, just, you know, kind of just thumb through it. He goes, yeah, it's okay. He goes, wow, you write in this every day. And I said, did you just listen to the talk? Were you even in the room? Did you hear what I said? This makes you feel better every day. Why wouldn't I write in it every single day? This is called the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. My name is David George Brook. The Brooker came from my fraternity brothers at the University of Washington in the early 70s. And they would call me and say, I need a dose of the Brooker because I'm kind of energetic. I tend to be able to motivate and inspire people quite a bit. It's just part of my lot in life. And so now they call me, I need a dose of the Brooker. And they go, wait a minute. Before we go any further, have you written in your gratitude journal yet? And they go, no, bam, I just hang up on the phone. I just hit the off button and they call back about 20 seconds later. I think we got cut off. Like, no, we didn't. No, we didn't get cut off. I hung up on you. Go write in your gratitude journal and then call me. You got to pedal your own bike. I'll be the training wheels, but I'm not pedaling your own bike. I think the good Lord gives us a toolbox, but he doesn't build the house for us. I think we got to do a little bit of a participation thing ourselves here. So Make such a big difference. Okay, write this phone number down, 206-371-8309, 206-371-8309. What I'd like you to do is I would like you to text, that's my number, I would like you to text me, 206-371-8309, text me the number one thing you're grateful for. I want to know, I love to pull my audience and see what people say. What's the number one thing at the top of the list? Okay, he's got the mic on. 206-371-8309. And I will tell you as you're doing that, I love to see what the people say and, and get a flavor. I'm surprised. Sometimes the Rotarians come up with a lot of the similar answers, but different groups will differently focus on different things that they're grateful for. So the number one thing you're grateful for, text that to me, 206-371-8309. And the, and the gratitude tip I'm going to give you on this, okay, who's got the mic on? Holy cow. Somebody's got their mic on. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the gratitude tip for this is if you just write one word. Now, I write and I do this whole thing, the five minutes every single day. I've got probably 50 journals I do. They last for about three or four months. And But if you just try one word, if you just try a sentence, if you just try three bullet points for a week, it'll get you some momentum and you'll see how you feel. It'll make such a big difference. So it makes a big, big difference. So people ask me, how can I get more gratitude in my life? And I put, as I said, I put in the chat, the, um, the gratitude journal, you can get there. And you can also get a hold of me there too. But I find it also really interesting. I mentioned a couple of times, it's so important to have a great relationship with yourself. The more you focus on your blessings and your abundance, the better relationship you have with yourself. And you saw how many people's number went up from a simple exercise of focusing on the three things you're grateful for, for plus the highlight of your day. That, respons that responsibility can be even better when you focus on all the good things that you have. So I think it's so important to have a great relationship with yourself. I think next, find your talent. If you're a five foot one, 120 pound young man, you're probably not going to be a quarterback in the NFL. Maybe you should be a jockey or something. So figure out where you're the square peg in the square hole. Find out what you're passionate about. I'm extremely passionate about gratitude. Even at whatever ages we all are as Rotarians, as I say, a little bit older than some groups I speak to, it doesn't matter. I started this business nine years ago at 62. I'm 71. I'm going to be speaking to my 80s and 90s, God willing. That's how passionate I am. How do you find out what you're passionate about? If you haven't found it yet, maybe it's time in the fourth quarter to find what you're passionate about. What did you want to be when you grew up? What would you do if you had no money that didn't matter if you were paid? What would you do if you had a million dollars in your checking account every day? All those kinds of things can kind of lead you to your passion. And I think after that, your purpose is probably going to be the, the result of having those three things, finding yourself, your talent, and your passion. I had a gentleman come up to me one day and he gives me a check for a million dollars. He's a friend of mine named Michael Hartzell. 
$1 million. David George Brooks, he hands it to me. Would you take it? And I said, sure. He's had a lot of money. And, but he grabs it back at the last second. He goes, no, there's only one condition. If I give you this, you have to stop being that gratitude guy, which is my brand immediately upon receiving this check. Would you do it? And I said, no. And he goes, I think you found your purpose. And I think that's what we all are looking for. At least most of us are looking for. So you get a relationship with yourself, figure out what your talent is, figure out what you're passionate about. You're probably going to find your purpose. So, all right. Last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about sharing gratitude. There's nothing better than sharing something when you really are happy or sad. When you're sad, who's the first person you call? That's going to be a pretty close friend. We've got some negative news. They're going to be able to empathize with you. As I said earlier, if it's great news, my son just got a big promotion and free to lay works in San Diego and he's just 27 and he's already been running 300 stores. So it's very, see, I'm the first guy he called. So it's really always an indicator of who you're closest with. So what we're going to do is grab your smartphones. And I call this the four T's as in the letter T like this telephone, text, tweet, or tell. And in this case, we're probably going to text. So I'm going to give you 30, you know what? I'm going to give you 60 seconds and then I'll wrap up. I want you to text somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. And as I said, I'll give you 60 seconds and be sure and use the word grateful and whoever, I don't care who it is, but text them. And if you can get another couple of texts in 60 seconds, but do as many as you can, 60 seconds, go. Okay, there's about 60 seconds. Hopefully you got at least one text out. When I go to the junior highs, they've knocked out about eight or nine texts in 60 seconds. It's, I've never seen fingers move so fast. Then when I go to the senior centers, I have to kind of help them. and We'll get this text knocked out here in a little bit. But it is pretty strange because when I do the things in person, they come back to the book table and they want to show me their text. And this guy shows me his text from this exercise and it says, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty hardcore. Just trying to be nicer. Another one said, are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> Jeez, what's up with these relationships out there? But one of the times I was at a performing art centers where the seats went up at an angle and I say text, telephone, tweet or tell. And this gal was using her telephone and she was about 10 feet from the podium on the stage and I could hear her and she goes, hi, honey, it's me. I just wanted to let you know that I just am so grateful for you. She used the word grateful. I'm, I'm assuming it was her husband. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. And I'm just really, really grateful for you. To I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. What is with these people? It's your idea. It's not my idea. So it's always nice when you can share things. So last thing I'll mention is that I'm always asked how this, this presentation can affect individual companies and so forth. And do I do it for individual companies? Yes, I never charge for rotary, but just think about the employees and some of the people that you work with or have people that you work with, how this could impact them. And if it makes sense for you, please reach out to me. I put my information in the chat. I do individual coaching, but I do a lot of speaking and I get a lot of phenomenal referrals from Rotary, which is why I never, cha never charge. And the information is in the chat, as I mentioned. You can also buy the gratitude journal. So that is my message. I will tell you, give it the opportunity to change your life. We are in an extremely stressful time, which would be a very big understatement. If you get a gratitude attitude, an attitude of gratitude, and you focus on what you have and you have gratitude turn, what you haven't to enough, your whole life works better. Your self-esteem goes up. And we all know when our self-esteem goes up, everything in our life works better when we feel better about ourselves. That's what gratitude can do for you. It can change it, your life. It can transform your life. It can save your life. I feel it saved mine. It can save yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Hey, did you want to take over now that you found your phone, Andrea? Who, Do you know me? how to unmute your phone, Brian? No, I don't want to take over. I think you're doing a great job, Greg. 
and I'm grateful well, for you I, taking I, over. I'm doing the best I can with the little bit of stuff that you gave me. Um, I'm glad you figured out how to use a virtual background, Brian. Does anybody have any questions for David? How long have you been a motivational speaker? Nine years. I started in 2013. Actually, I guess about eight years. I managed Nordstrom stores for a long time. Then I managed Lowe's home improvement stores. But I wanted to be a speaker when I was 19. I went and spoke to a high school group and I went back to my car and I was the freshman at the University of Washington. I thought I want to be a motivational speaker. And it took me 45 years to get the guts to do it. Wow. And I was managing a Lowe's at 63, uh, eight years ago. I'm 71 now. And I came home and Connor, who was four when my wife died, his mom, and my older son was 14. And he says, what are you doing home? It's two in the afternoon. And I said, I quit. He goes, you quit Lowe's? And I went, yeah. And he goes, you quit being a store manager? And I went, yeah. And he goes, well, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I'm going to be a speaker. And he looks up from the couch and he goes, well, that's just super dad. <laughs> he goes, I have a question for you. What are we going to do for food? <laughs> I just said, Trust me. It's okay, Con. Everything will be fine. But it's something that that's why I don't care what anybody's age is. And I'm very open about my age and it's age is just a number, but it doesn't matter where you are. It's never too late to start what you're passionate about this life. I think we can all agree on not all a ton of things, but one thing we can agree on life shoots by extremely fast. It's it just feels like I was in high school a couple of years ago and that was 50 years ago. So it's find your passion and use gratitude to help you with that. And it'll keep you inspired as well. Yes. Very good. Very Thank cool. you. Anybody okay. else? Bill, are you nodding? Cause you have a question. Are you, are you nodding? Cause you know, everything already. <laughs> <laughs> he knows everything. He, he's, is he muted? I don't know. <laughs> Bill. Bill almost always has a question. That's why I was wondering. No worries. All right, you guys. Well, listen, thank you so much for being a good audience. Brian, I'm glad you were back, back online. I said, where's Brian O'Neill? I know he's out there somewhere. So great to talk with all of you. Thank we you. appreciate and As I said, I left right. information in the chat if you have anything else you're interested in. So take care. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Come visit us. Any other business stuff? Yeah. Hey, can we end a, a moment in silence for sure. the VTA people? Sure. Yes, that's mm -hmm. Six PM tonight. Oh my God. Okay, thank you guys. No, for sure. You guys having a good time in Rhode Island? Okay. Yeah, eating a whole lot of stuff. Had clam cakes, I had a lobster roll, I had a blueberry pie a little while ago. Just and you found